Hi everyone, in this video, I will talk about T-cell differentiation. So in this video, what I would do is first give you an idea about briefly how T-cell develop and where do they develop. After development, how do they differentiate into several subtypes? And what are the factors that, the, that help the T-cells to get differentiated into separate identities? And I would discuss the details about the signaling and the genetic aspect to it. So stay tuned and watch the video till the end. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so such that you can get notification whenever I upload a video. So let's start. So our body has one primary lymphoid organ known as thymus. Now thymus is a training school of T cell where T cell develops actually. So in the bone marrow T cell forms and in an immature state they go to their school which is the thymus. Thymus is just a training school for T cell, just like an army training school, where the armies learn several tactics and become an army. Now, after thymic selection, what happens is T cells are becoming two different type of T cells. One is CD8-4 positive T cells, another is CD8 positive T cells. The CD8 positive T cells are known as hyper the helper T cells which are able to recognize the peptides bound to class 2 MHCs whereas CD8 positive T cells are cytotoxic T cells which are destined to identify the peptides in the class 1 MHC. Now after they have uh, their fate is kind of determined they migrate into a secondary lymph node a secondary lymphoid organ which is lymph node. Now lymph node is just like a army camp to it so like in army camp army stayed there for kind of a for a particular period for and and wait there till any kind of massacre happens so there are distinct re region inside the lymph node where b cell and t cell reside so definitely the t cells reside in the paracortex which could be thought as specific barracks inside the army army camp now dendritic cell which are kind of compared to a patrolling police officer would go to this so called army base and let the t cell knows about what type of pathogen has invaded and according to that t cells would prepare how to fight for that uh, sort of how to fight for that infection and they would kind of they, they would kind of divide themselves into small platoons and these small platoons are actually several subtypes of the T cells. Now, For example, a pathogen here, which is a pathogen associated molecular pattern here, which is could be a portion of the bacterial flagella, could be a portion of the bacterial lipid or anything, could be detected by specific antigen present, presenting cells such as dendritic cells or it could be also alternatively detected by macrophages all by specific surface bound toll like receptors now specific specifically these dendritic cells which are kind of like a patrolling police officer would go to the base camp that means in the lymph node and interact with the t cell and depending upon what type of polarizing cytokine they are secreting this naive t helper cell would differentiate into several subcategories for example, now in this picture, you can see that depending upon the polarizing cytokine, the naive CD8, the naive CD4 positive helper T cell can either differentiate into Th1 subcategory or Th2 subcategory. So the determining factor is the polarizing cytokine. But what governs that what type of polarizing cytokine would be secreted? Now, secretion of the cytokine is kind of based upon what type of infection had happened. Let me give an example. For example, a virus has invaded a cell and the virus also is detected, the viral DS RNA is let's say detected by uh, intracellular TLR, TLR3, which signals in turn inside the dendritic cell to produce a lot of interleukin-12. Now, once interleukin-12 here works like a polarizing cytokine. In order for this naive T cell to get activated, 
it requires at least two signal and a third modulatory signal. The first signal comes from the viral proteins or anything which is displayed on the surface by class 2 MHC. That is actually recognized by T cell receptor which gives a signaling to, to the nucleus. Second, a CD28 on the naive T cell and a CD80 or CD86 on the dendritic T cell have an interaction. That gives rise a second signal. And a third signal comes from IL-12 and IL-12 receptor mediated signaling. Now this third signal works downstream via STAT4. Phosphorylated STAT4 goes to the nucleus and transcribes master regulator genes like TBET. Now in this situation, IL-12 mediated signaling ultimately allow the expression of master regulator TBET. Now TBET is work like a toggle switch. It can switch between the T cells can switch between alternative subphases or alternative substates by expressing this particular gene. So once T weight is ex expressed, their fate is switched towards Th1 positive cell. In other example, let's say the infecting uh, substance is a helminth. That is in turn detected, which ultimately give rise to a TLR mediated signal to nucleus such that the dendritic cell would secrete interleukin-4 and interleukin-4 works like a differentiating polarizing cytokine which would allow a naive T cell to express GATA3 instead of TBET. That would switch the fate towards a TH2 type of CD8 positive cells, not a TH1. So depending upon what type of polarizing cytokine is present and also what type of master regulator is expressed and the source of infection or the type of invaded invasion. Based on all these three factors, it, all these three factors determine how a T cell would differentiate further into subcategories. Now here is an overall example that how different polarizing cytokine can give rise to different subpopulations or several subcategories of T cell. For example, the master gene expression is very important. For example, for a TH positive cell, T bet expression is most important. Whereas in case of TH17 cell, Rho gamma T is very important master regulator gene. For example, TH2, GATA3, and for T regulatory cell, FOXP3 is a very important uh, master regulator gene. So all this master regulator gene expression determines that what would be the fate of that subpopulation of the T cell. So that is how a particular naive CD4 T cell, helper T cell, becomes several subcategories of the T cell. And it is mostly determined the cytokines. And that's why cytokine signaling is very important for T cell differentiation. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was informative to you. If you like my video, give it a quick thumbs up. Please don't forget to share, subscribe and thank you.